Hello everyone, welcome back for lecture 11, part one, where we're gonna expand on what we've already started talking about with our gas liquid systems, and we're also going to continue our discussions on what do you do when you have a binary system. And so for today, in this part, we're gonna talk about the multi-component gas liquid system, as well as phase diagrams for binary systems. Now, if you have a multi-component system with gases and liquids, we may, we can use an example of alcohol and water. And as we've discussed previously, if you combine Raoult's law and Dalton's law, you get this expression, Y, the partial, the mole fraction in the vapor times the total pressure is going to equal the mole fraction of your component A in the liquid phase times the vapor pressure or the saturation pressure of that component. And one of the questions you may have when dealing with a multi-component system is, what two properties of the liquid control how much alcohol is in the vapor? So the first part that affects how much alcohol you have in the vapor is having a high amount of alcohol in the liquid. So the more alcohol that's present on the surface, the more opportunities it has to go into the vapor phase. Okay. And the other way to increase the amount of alcohol in the vapor phase is by having a higher value of P star. So you have a higher escape tendency, which you can do by increasing your temperature. Now, when you work with a binary system, there's a couple of equations that you'll want to keep, uh, keep in mind. So as a rem reminder, we have Raoult's law, where the partial pressure of A equals Xa, mole fraction of A in the liquid, times Pa star, the vapor pressure of A. And you also have Dalton's law, where you have the partial pressure of A equals the mole fraction of A times the total pressure. And again, you can do this for component A and you can do this for component B. And when we do this, we, we make these assumptions that we have an ideal gas and we have an ideal liquid, where an ideal liquid assumes that there's no intermolecular interactions. And then when you, when you add liquids together, the volume is additive. So if I add 50 milliliters of A to 50 milliliters of B, I will get 100 milliliters. Now, when we combine when we combine PA and PB from Raoult's law, what's going to happen is that we will have P total equals XA PA star plus XB PB star. What we can do with that is we can rearrange that and substitute in XB. We can define XB in terms of XA, where we know it's 1 minus XA. So we now have the slight modification. And as a, another reminder, this is for an ideal binary system. So again, an ideal gas, ideal liquid, where there's no intramolecular interactions. And by doing this, if we rearrange everything one more time, where we now have all the PA stars in one location and the PV stars in the other location, we would get P total equals PV star plus PA star minus PV star times XA. Now, the reason I, I've rearranged all of this is because I'm trying to help you set up for generating your own PXY diagram, where a PXY diagram is going to help show this relationship between your two components and what your composition of your system would be, how much of each of your components you have in both states, the vapor and the liquid state. That's all what you that's all items you can use in or gain from a PXY diagram. And in the second part, we're going to talk about how do you read a PXY and TXY diagram to gain all that information. But just to start, I just wanted to give you this equation, P total equals PB star plus PA star minus PV star times XA as the basis for starting to generate your own PXY diagram. So for this PXY diagram, what we've developed with that equation is a line. We have a bubble point line. So this is relating every, all the information in our liquid state, hence why it's called a bubble point line, because this is dealing with the liquid and it deals with right up to the point where you form the first bubble of liquid that now has turned into a vapor. And if you, if you, take, if you notice at the, or I'm gonna identify that at the two bounds, the lower and the upper bound at a mole fraction of zero and a mole fraction of one for ethanol, You'll know that those two are the P stars for your two different components, where if you have that red indicates the P star for ethanol or the contribution of ethanol, the blue indicates the contribution of water, 
And in this case, if you have a mole fraction of ethanol of one, obviously that's all con contributed by ethanol. So that final value, that's ethanol's P star. And if you were all the way on the left-hand side where you have a mole fraction of ethanol of zero, that would be P, PW star if we have an ethanol water system. So again, that lower, that lower bound when there's no ethanol present, that would be water's vapor pressure. And if you go to the higher bound, that would be ethanol's vapor pressure. And as I mentioned before, this is starting to get you set up to make your own PXY diagram. And this bubble point line is half the diagram. You also would have a dew point line or a dew point curve. And just to show you what eventually you're gonna get to, I wanted to give you a representative PXY diagram. And so in this case, I've got my two parts where we have a straight line, which is our bubble point line, which is all about our liquid. And then that red curve is our vapor curve. And that would in, in be indicative of our dew point temperatures or dew point conditions. And that, and again, we're going to talk about how to go through this diagram in the next part. Now, as a reminder, we're dealing with ideal solutions. And because we have an ideal solution, we're going to have a straight bubble, a straight line for the bubble point line. And when, when we have non-ideal solutions, that, that curve is going to look a lot more complicated. And Similar, and again, as a reminder, similar to an ideal gas that um, with the liquid component, we're making a couple of assumptions where the enthalpy of mixing is equal to zero and there is, uh, and there's no volume change when mixing. So again, if I'm mixing 50 milliliters of water and 50 milliliters of alcohol, I should have 100 milliliters. In reality, that isn't actually the case, but for an ideal solution, we're, we're making that assumption. And normally there would be an enthalpy of mixing and that would be a consequence of new interactions between your substances. And when that happens, that causes you to deviate quite a bit from what you would originally anticipate, which is why we have to make these assumptions for ideal solutions, even uh, just to get us going. But later down the line, we have to make modifications if we want to properly model what's actually going on in our system. And now moving forward, uh, if we now now we've talked about a binary system, and so we can talk about uh, what a phase diagram would look like. Like when you're going through a vapor to a liquid vapor to a liquid, what does that curve look like? And I figured it'd be good to start off with a single component and then just show you some of the changes that happen when you go to a binary system. So in our single single component, we have a phase diagram where we have solid, liquid, and vapor. If we have a jar with uh, water vapor and we are removing heat, so we're, we're condensing our water, what ends up happening is that you have your temperature of your vapor, or you have vapor, it's at a particular temperature, and as you remove heat, you're causing your vapor to decrease in temperature. And as you progress on the right, uh, towards the right on the x-axis, what eventually will happen is that you're gonna transition. You're going to go from a vapor to a liquid. And as you, as you may remember, during that phase transition, there's no change in temperature because all the energy is just going into changing your, your state, going from a vapor to a liquid. And after you fi finish doing that phase transition, you will then resume changing, decreasing temperature because you're now all in one state. You did at this point be in the liquid state. And that's the curve that I'm sure you're, you're pretty familiar with and you've commonly seen when you have one component. Now, what I'm gonna say is that that curve will change a little bit when we have a binary system. So now, if we reset the, the board and we now, instead of having just one component, we have two components, so we have ethanol and water. If we make this phase diagram now, it's gonna change a little bit. So this is what that phase diagram would look like. So again, as you go from left to right, you do have a vapor and that vapor is gonna decrease in temperature. What then gets interesting, as you might notice right now, is that that liquid to vapor phase transition state, it's not all at one temperature. The temperatures are changing while you're, you're going from a vapor to a liquid. 
And the reason for that is that you're now, because you have a, a mixture instead of just a single component, there's a wide range of temperatures where your mixture can coexist. And so it's not just one temperature that, it's not like one, it's not one temperature anymore that you're, you need, it's a, a collection of temperatures because you're now getting a mixture of different compositions for your liquid and your gas phases. And in this scenario, when you have these, this phase transition, there's a couple of terms that you also can use to define this system. So first of all, when you're going for, like when you go for your vapor and you form your first liquid droplet, that would be considered your dew point. And when you go from, if you go from a, a liquid to forming your first bubble point, uh, bubble, you will then have a bubble point. And all of these points in between your dew point and your bubble point are boiling points. So you'll start at your dew point, go all the way down to your bubble point. And all of those are boiling points for this mixture. And that's one of the big changes that happens when you deal with this binary system. And what we're gonna talk about in part two is reading these PXY and TXY diagrams, which have a lot of information on your binary system and help you help you and will help you to determine what the composition of your liquid and your vapor state is, as well as how much liquid and vapor you have for a mixture. And so that's gonna conclude part one of our lecture 11. And just to recap, we've talked a little bit more about our multi-component gas liquid systems, and we talked a little bit about our phase diagrams for binary systems. And that's all for part one. I'll see you soon for part two.